Eddie Gabor, owner, Key Advisors Wealth Management, to find out some of your thoughts on the market rally that we have seen. It's been a great start to the summer. Uh, you know, we've talked about buying dips in the first quarter in April in anticipation of a summer rally. Um, and now we're a little extended. There's no doubt about it. So a little bit of a pullback here. I actually would welcome uh, so we could buy even more. I think what has stayed strong will continue to be strong through the summer months. Um, and so right now we are extremely bullish and is about as fully invested as we've been. Uh, but we are staying concentrated in the tech trade right now because that seems to be where the money flows are going. Um, and so again, I think right now it's natural to expect a little bit of a breather and actually healthy to see a breather after the huge run up we've seen in some of these names. So I welcome this pullback and I'll be patient here to be able to add more. Do you think uh, in the next 24 hours, we were just talking about the triple witch, you know, you all have um, expirations of stocks and futures and all kinds of options and um, a rebalancing too. Look, the VIX uh, went from 12 something now up to 13, 12. Do you think um, there's going to be a lot of volatility even between now and tomorrow's closing bell? And what action would you maybe take in different scenarios? So I think you're going to see, uh, you will see a lot of volatility and like it's hard to plan when you're trading over one day. If you're a day trader, that's one thing. Uh, I'll tell you that the biggest thing that we're watching here, um, we, uh, we have a position in NVIDIA. I'd love to see a 10% pullback in NVIDIA uh, to be able to buy more. Uh, even you look at names like Supermicro um, as well too that we would buy uh, on any type of material pullback because you would expect again a 10% pullback on names that have moved like that is not really uh, that big of a move because I think what's going to happen is you're going to see a lot of institutional money flow into these names uh, that are maybe underperforming and that is in our opinion why we're going to continue to see all-time highs go through uh, the month of summer through the summer months and past summer we'll have to see this is a market you have to look at day by day week by week uh, because there's definitely some headwinds that we're going to have to deal with I just think short term here the setup is still really bullish yeah, I just saw an article that talked about Bitcoin and uh, it's just a little bit of a pullback that we've seen. It's at 67,000 and change. Of, I mean, the high not that long ago was closer to 75,000. But just saying maybe there's a summer doldrums of some sort, you know, Bitcoin uh, for the week is down 2%. NVIDIA just hit $140 today and, and maybe that's profit taking. Or is it that people are just sort of giving up a little bit of risk? and taking that off the table. I think it's more profit taking here short term than anything. I mean, look, it's uh, you know, I know a lot of focus will be on Nvidia. I think it's up 40 plus percent in just one month. So again, even if it goes down by 10 percent, that would not concern us at all. We would actually look to buy that. Um, and Bitcoin, again, to us, the biggest risk proxy to look at would be Bitcoin. And so I would expect if you're going to see the tech trade stay strong in the summer, you would expect to see crypto uh, to kind of show some signs of life as well, too. If it doesn't and continues to break down, then maybe that's a sign that the selling that we're starting to just see today in some of these higher flying names uh, may continue. So uh, I think both of those asset classes are very highly correlated to one another. So you do need to keep your eye on the ball there. Yeah. So let's talk about your investment strategy. Um, what have you been doing lately? What kind of moves are you making? So we've been buying, uh, like I said, we bought the tech trade uh, here over the last uh, several weeks. Uh, we have NVIDIA in our portfolios. We have Supermicro in our portfolio, uh, Google and Amazon. Interestingly, this morning, we actually trimmed some of our uh, QQQ position and SPY position at the open uh, to get ourselves a ca higher cash position because those names I just talked about, we think will have more juice than the underlying indexes. So the way we traded around it was raising cash from the indexes with the idea that we would look to add more to our individual holdings uh, as we see the setup for July being pretty strong. So today was just a tactical move to take advantage of the gain, but really more of the setup that we see heading into the summer months. So we're hoping we get more of a pullback in some of those names I just mentioned. So July, the setup for July is pretty strong. What's gonna drive that? So look, I think the main thing that's going to drive is is going to be the money flows in the sense that, you know, you can look to a lot of areas that have really underperformed this market. 
this is a very narrow market, meaning that there are quite a few things that haven't been working. And that means those that have invested in those areas that are really underperforming. So I think you're going to see people chase performance uh, to that way they can stay in touch, stay in line with their peers. And so you're going to see money flows go into these bigger cap names uh, because I don't think you bull market continues without the tech trade continuing. So if you think this market still has legs, you're going to want to be in the area that has, in our opinion, uh, the best risk reward. Now, once we get that last leg up, we do expect to see some turbulence. So we will trim back again. But I think the setup is good for summer. Right, right. You also are looking abroad, India in particular. Tell me about that story. India has been, we've owned India uh, almost 12 months now. It's been a, a great place to be. Their economy is growing at about 8%. Uh, per year, eight, their GDP is at eight, their uh, inflation is pre-COVID levels. And you're seeing, you know, some of these tech companies we're talking about are investing a lot of money in India. Uh, their demographics are strong. And so right now that's been a great place to be. And a new international trade we just put on uh, a couple of weeks ago is, is Europe. Uh, people were hating on Europe because of the elections and whatnot. But if they come out of this recession, we could see some reacceleration in their economy. So India and Europe has been a way for us to be able to kind of diversify outside the U.S. in an area that, again, has performed pretty well on the India side. And we'll see if Europe has that catch up trade uh, that we expect to happen there. The Fed, uh, when you look at Fed funds futures, the likelihood of a cut in November is 77 percent, December 94 percent. Would you change your investment strategy if and when the Fed cuts? When the Fed starts cutting will probably be when we become start becoming more bearish because to us, Fed cuts are not usually bullish. Uh, you get that euphoric moment in the market in anticipation of a rate cut. This is part of our thesis for this summer. I think you're starting to see that play out. But let's not forget, the Fed does not cut rates when things are good. Uh, so we've got plenty of headwinds ahead of us uh, that we'll have to deal with. And the rate cuts will be the first sign that they are closer. Uh, and that means when we will start trimming. Yeah, understood. Eddie Gabor, great to see you. Key Advisors Wealth Management. Thank you, Eddie.